Lee Sin, a fighter with a storied history for his versatility, skill expression, mobility, skirmishing, and early game pressure. Regardless of the meta, how strong or how weak he is, his fervently loyal fanbase will insta-lock him no matter what, and his theoretical consistency is what cemented him as one of League's most iconic champions to this day. Vayne, a marksman known for her simple yet ruthlessly effective playstyle. With virtually unparalleled damage uptime in single combat, she's able to tear through anyone standing in her way, no matter their durability. Her incredible combat mobility and outplay potential allow her to remain a constant threat, growing even stronger as time goes on. Both characters have been a mainstay throughout the game's timeline ever since their inception, in completely different ways though. While they ultimately converge on the same end result, what is the main difference between these two? The former is at his best in the early stages of the game, while the latter is at her best in the mid to late stages of the game. Champions are heavily defined by how well their pressure maintains with every passing minute in a game. As a result, two clashing philosophies have been at odds with one another for as long as I can remember, and while one group has been mutually agreed on as the superior one for quite some time, the recent durability changes in 12.10 have surfaced the age-old question once more. So for today, I want to share my own thoughts on the notion of scaling, what stage of the game is more important, early game or late game, and by extension, which group of champions is stronger over the other. But first, a word from our sponsor, NordPass. As I'm sure you're well aware by now, cybersecurity is a must-have in this day and age as data compromisation is happening more and more often. Fortunately, NordPass is a password manager created by the same team that made NordVPN. What NordPass does is basically generate encrypted passwords using cutting-edge encryption algorithms and remembers them for you so you don't have to memorize whatever gibberish is made for each one. It can store account passwords or even things like credit card information, syncing them across all devices, platforms, and browsers for better accessibility. While browsers offer the feature to automatically store your autofill information, it may not be as protected against data breaches as you might think. On the subject of data breaches, with NordPass Premium, one of its best features is a data breach scanner, letting you know which passwords for which platforms are compromised and giving you the option to make a brand new one. Very useful to have on deck. All in all, NordPass is a simple password manager that can give you a lot of peace of mind and not getting hacked. So if you're interested, head on over to nordpass.com slash vars or use the code vars for a two-year premium plan and one month additional for free. If you decide to change your mind for whatever reason, they do have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks again to NordPass for sponsoring the video, but for now, let's get back into it. In the past, I've gone over scaling several times. As one of the most influential elements in the game, it plays a great deal in establishing every champion's identity. Typically, when you're evaluating the strengths and weaknesses of someone, something along the lines of they fall off late game or they have a weak laning phase is thrown around, and for good reason. It's important to know when a champion is at their best and worst, so you know when to be aggressive and when to be cautious. Scaling in League is defined as one's arbitrary progression of value, usually in comparison to others. Normally, every champion goes stronger over time, with every level up, every new item purchased, every objective secured, their various parameters increase. But the rate at which you grow stronger as the game transitions from one phase to another differs from champion to champion, thus adding dynamically fluctuating results in every game. There's no universal constant that determines this, it can originate from an endless number of factors. A champion can have a very strong early game by virtue of high base damage like Rek'Sai, or strong neutral like Jace. They can have a strong early game through a very dangerous all in like Olaf, or short burst trades like Pantheon. The same holds true for the other end of the spectrum. A champion's late game efficiency can be a result of a lot of things. They can excel in pressuring enemies from a distance like Zerath, staggering damage output like Vayne, smothering zone control and pressure like Azir, or increase utility and protection like Sona. Regardless of the method, it's commonplace for champions with a strong early game to gradually diminish in power the longer the game lasts, and vice versa. Late game champions start out noticeably weaker in relative pressure to account for their steeper climb upwards. Try to imagine it like a battery versus a solar panel. Batteries start with full energy capacity that slowly drains over time before running out. Solar panels begin a game empty, but amass power over time. Of course, a handful of champions are known for being relevant for the entirety of a match with a strong early, mid, and late game, albeit not to the same extent as one dedicated in either field. As mentioned before, an essential part of a champion's identity is how well they scale. It plays a huge role in deciding who you're going to play in every game. If you see a team consisting of Aatrox top, Lee Sin jungle, Draven bot, and Pike support, you're staring down a very early and mid-game centric lineup. As the mid laner, are you doubling down on hitting the enemy team hard and fast by picking a strong early game champion, or do you believe it wise to have an insurance policy in the event things don't go as planned and select a late game scaler? At first, it might sound like an easy answer for many of you. For the past 4-5 to five years, the average game length has been steadily decreasing, and prior to version 12.10, we were more or less at a point where once 30 minute games are now 25 minutes, occasionally less. That would give the impression that late game champs are losing equity in light of that late game not being an assured outcome anymore. And while there is a grain of truth to that, there are way too many aspects of the contrary that make that claim not as substantiated as one would expect. The interesting thing about this debate is that even though League gets almost two dozen balance patches every year and champions are frequently rotated in and out of the meta, 
the arguments in favor of either side remain mostly the same, and that's after you factor in how much the game has changed in recent years with the advent of Elemental Drakes, Dragon Souls, Elder Dragon, Tower Plates, Subjective Bodies, Mythic Items, Runes Reforged, etc. It's a very delicate balance that Riot has been and will continue trying to stabilize until the end of time. This brings us to the topic of the video. Which is more important in League of Legends, early game or late game scaling? Is it better for a player and their team to focus on one or the other, or should there be an equal balance? Moreover, how does the champion scaling influence their viability in the long term? Figuring that part out demands a few questions answered first. What even is early, mid, and late game? Everyone has their own definition for it, but for me, I like to section them off based on a specific event rather than a set time frame. So the early game is whatever happens prior to tower plates falling off at 14 minutes because that's when objective bodies begin as well. Around this point, most champions, assuming they're not egregiously ahead or behind, are around level 10 I think. They finish their first item in boots and are well on their way to item number 2. That's the early game. Generally, when a champion has a strong early game, it refers to this part. The mid game is from that point until the Dragon Soul is acquired, which can be as early as 21 minutes or as late as, you know, forever if not the team cares about it. Reason being, the Dragon Soul does two things. First, it's a permanent buff for whichever team secures it that's strong enough to decide the momentum of the match going forward. Second, it opens up Elder Drake, and most of the time, whichever team secures that is guaranteed to win or at least acquire a significant advantage in objectives, be it turrets, baron, inhibitors, what have you. That's when we enter the late game. Other people tend to decide early, mid, and late game based on how many items the average player has, which is also fine. Early game is one completed item and boots, mid game is the second and third finish item, and late game is the fourth and final one. Point being, it's not a hard line in the sand. When it comes to the early game, the main reason why so much focus is placed on it is because it's always present in every game no matter what. Each round of solo queue opens up a laning phase. There's never been a point ever in the history of the game's, what, 12 year lifespan where you skip laning phase and went straight into 5v5 team fights. And no, level 1 invades do not count. In essence, the early game is inevitable. Therefore, champions like Lee Sin, Pantheon, Rek'Sai, uh, Talon, Misfortune, they always have their strongest moment since that strongest moment is the first phase of every game. Scaling takes place in a set order. Early gamers will have their moment to shine before late gamers full stop. In a way, you can imagine it like a turn-based game. Early gamers are glass cannon sweepers like Weavile, Zeraora, or Dragapult. More often than not, they're gonna hit you first, but since they're squishy, if you survive their burst combo, you can smash them to pieces right back. But if you spend any amount of time playing competitive Pokemon, you'll know that sweepers are impossible to stop once they get going. Due to the game's snowballing nature, the best defense is a strong offense. If you build up enough momentum with an opening strike, it can prevent your opponent from responding even if they have the means to do so. Early successes and failures have lasting consequences for the rest of the game. Hypothetically, if your team consists of Renekton, Rengar, Katarina, Draven, and some early game support against the enemy teams Gwen, Kindred, Orianna, Kog'Maw, and Lulu, yes, they have a superior late game, but that doesn't matter if you build up a lead substantial enough to neutralize that possibility before it happens. Going by that, it makes perfect sense, and we have the empirical data to back it up. A lot of early and mid game champions have better average win rates in solo queue and even to some extent pro play. Conventional late game 1v9ers like Ryze, Azir, Gangplank, and Kai'Sa tend to have lower overall win rates, and a lot of that stems from players not knowing how to play the early and mid game properly, leading to them falling so far behind their hyperscaling is cancelled out by the massive gold deficit. This scenario is more prominently displayed in the jungle. Champions who dominate the early game perform much better in win rate the higher the elo. In patch 12.10, Rek'Sai had a 53% win rate in Diamond Plus, Rengar as well, Kha'Zix was at 51. If you go down to Silver, Rek'Sai and Rengar's win rates drop all the way to 48% and Kha'Zix down to 49. Conversely, Master Yi had almost a 54% win rate in Silver but a 48.5% win rate in Diamond Plus. I understand these are specific instances and may not reflect the entire jungle roster's performative data, but there is evidence proving early game's importance. That being said, those very same win rate metrics also reinforce the point against early game champions. While they're able to snowball games really fast, the same can happen in the opposite direction as well. First impressions are lasting impressions. If you make a strong first impression, it should carry you all the way to victory. But if you fail to seize the opportunity, you will rarely, if ever, have a second chance. That's not to say an early game champion is completely useless later on, but the amount of stuff they can do at any point in time falls off a cliff. Early gamers don't scale well usually from not gaining anything from items outside of the raw stats they provide. Take a look at Renekton for instance. His Q damages all enemies around him and heals him. His W is a single target point and click stun that strikes a few times. His E is two short range dashes and his ultimate is an HP and fury steroid alongside a magic damage aura. Building attack damage only increases his damage and healing, it doesn't intrinsically alter the properties of any of his abilities in any way. The scope of his pressure stays within the same range of boundaries so to speak. Make no mistake, underestimate him and he will tear you a new one but he doesn't get anything beyond that. 
Now, look at someone like Vayne. Auto attackers naturally scale well in light of there being more than one way to enhance their damage. First, you have standard AD, increasing how much damage you deal with each hit. But then there are other factors like on hit effects, crit chance, and attack speed. So you can not only increase the damage of your hits, but the frequency of them. An example of an ability caster with good scaling would be Vladimir. Vladimir scales better than Renekton because building ability power does more than boost his damage. It also grants Bones health thanks to his passive, and it increases the healing from his Q and ultimate as well, making him grow into her ability on top of defense. Vice versa, building health increases his damage to a degree. So if Renekton wanted to be a late gamer, he would need more scaling elements. Say, his armor shred on empowered dice lasts longer, the more AD he gets, or the bonus health on his ultimate is based on his maximum health. Stuff like that. But I digress, early gamers rely more on their base numbers considering no one has any items at the start of a game. Around mid to late game is where base damage falls off in relevance and items start to matter a lot more. You have a limited amount of time to win the game or build up a gold lead that can buy you some time. From the moment you spawn on the rift, it's an uphill battle. As for late gamers, their biggest point is that the game is more of a marathon than a 100 meter dash. Early gamers would win every single time if solo queue matches at a time limit. That is, if there was some contingency in place, like if by 25 minutes the game isn't over, whichever team has a higher gold lead or more turrets or something wins. But there isn't a time limit, so a match can theoretically go on forever. In other words, for late game scalers, time is on their side. If they can make it past the 25 minute mark without the enemy team having an insurmountable lead, it only gets easier for them. And honestly, even if they fall far behind, the game is designed in a way that puts more pressure on the team winning early on in the form of shutdown gold. And as of Season 12, we now have objective bunnies, adding even more chum charity. Shoutouts to Mario Party fans. Mind you, the significance of comeback factors have gotten more meaningful recently with objective bunnies as I said earlier and now the durability update. But I would argue it's always been like this. League of Legends is designed to be a scaling game. Dragons, towers, farming, etc. All of those help you get further and further into the game. Therefore, it makes practical sense to have at least a few late gamers in your team since that's inherently the direction you're gonna go. Solo queue results also adhere to this. We had the four horsewomen in the top lane, Fiora, Camille, Riven, and Irelia who all have very strong mid to late games. And of course, lest we forget, there's an entire role centered around scaling, the bot lane. Even early to mid game ADCs like Misfortune, Draven, and Lucian scale pretty dang well by nature of attack speed and crits. Additionally, contrary to popular belief, there aren't that many games where you fall so far behind that you have a snowball's chance in hell of winning. Solo queue mentality tries to convince otherwise, but only like 5 out of every 100 games are genuinely unwinnable, so if you're patient, you most certainly can be successful with late gamers, especially if you know how to play the early game correctly. Unfortunately, that's a lot easier said than done. While the game progresses in favor of scaling champions, the means in which you can achieve your power spike requires you to be near an enemy for a sustained period of time to do something, thus making you vulnerable more than any late game champ would like to be. Unlike other competitive games, camping is not a thing here. You can't simply AFK farm for 30 minutes because to scale you have to fight, or at the very least be in a situation that forces you to interact. Just as how late gamers have a chance to reach the strongest point, early gamers have a chance to stop you from doing so, and they will always have an advantage over you in the early game. Should you play defensively and focus only on staying alive, your lane opponent can use that priority to roam around the map, either to fight somewhere else or take objectives, causing you to slowly but surely bleed out in resources. Basically, you're thrusted into a very uncomfortable position where you don't want to get involved in fights because you're at your weakest point, but you don't want to give the enemy team full control over the entire map or else they'll out macro you and win. That, and a major source of frustration from playing late gamers is that you don't actually get to play the game for 15 to 20 minutes, making them less desirable over early gamers who forfeit delayed gratification for instant gratification. So as you can tell, there are pros and cons to both sides, but there is a clear winner in my opinion. Despite being someone who enjoys early game champs like Jace, Pantheon, and Renekton, I firmly believe that even before objective bounties and version 12.10 were added, late gamers are more sustainable long term in matches and in your solo queue journey. Like I said, the game is designed to scale, and it's always better to play someone who can scale reasonably well if not really well. Then again, this is largely based on opinion. So what I'm gonna do is leave a straw poll in the description of this video for you to vote on. What do you believe is more important, early game or mid game? Just for the sake of this experiment, assume mid game is split into two halves, early to mid game and mid to late game, so there's no actual mid game. We're gonna end things off here though, so if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server, and check out my other discussion episodes if you haven't yet. But for now, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.